If you're watching this video, that means you're having a problem getting your timer to communicate with our Grand Prix Race Manager software. For those of you that are using a USB to serial adapter or have a USB timer, I'll assume that you have already verified that the USB drivers are installed on your computer. That was covered in our previous video on communications troubleshooting USB drivers for your Windows or Mac operating system. If you're using a USB to serial adapter, or have a USB timer but haven't watched that video, please stop now and go back and watch it. The link to that video is down in the description for this video. Before we dive into the communications tests, I do want to mention a bit about electronic interference. When you run all of your cables for your timer, computer, projector, and so on, do not run any higher voltage cords like extension cords next to or coiled on top of the timer start switch cable or serial cable. The higher voltage cables can cause interference on the timer start switch cable or serial cable causing communications issues. We recommend routing the lower voltage cables down one side of the track and extension cords down the other side. If your high voltage cables do have to cross low voltage cables, ideally do so at a 90 degree angle to each other. Also, never run an extension cord under an aluminum track. So if you're having communications problems, first check how you have your cables run. That may solve your problem right there. One other thing that you can do to fight electronic interference is to get the clip-on ferrite cores for your start switch cable and your serial cable. Just make sure to get ones with a large enough of an inner diameter to fit onto the particular cable. For those of you with a timer that uses a direct USB connection to your computer and have a communications issue even after checking your cabling, you will need to contact the timer manufacturer for support. Okay, for those of you that are still with me, in this video we'll do a couple simple tests to help narrow down where the communications problem is occurring. These tests are covered in the software's help file under the troubleshooting section. The first one we call the paperclip test. The purpose of the paperclip test is to determine if the serial port on your computer is working properly. The second test is a continuity check of the serial cable. The purpose of the continuity test is to identify if you have a bad serial cable or if your serial cable is just not the correct type of cable to be using. We are going to start with the paperclip test. Again, the purpose of this test is to determine if the serial port on your computer is working properly. This test is for those using a USB to serial adapter or if you happen to have a computer with a built-in serial port. For this test you will need a piece of metal like a small paper clip or a small flat bladed screwdriver or you can use the serial port tester that we offer on our website. That serial port tester is also called a loop back tester. If you're using a USB to serial adapter that is the only thing that should be connected to the computer right now. You'll be doing this test on the end of that adapter. If you somehow have a built-in serial port, then you will be doing this test directly on that port. Now let's go to the Grand Prix Race Manager software, select the Other Serial Timer option on the hardware settings screen. Don't worry about setting any of the custom settings, just go with the default settings. Now click on the Start Testing button. Go ahead and get past the reminder message and then get past the now listening to the port message. Go ahead and type something into the command box. It doesn't matter what. Just make it several letters long or do a short phrase. Now let's take a look at the end of the serial port. If you have a built-in serial port, it will look like the port on the left. Two rows of pins with a total of nine pins. Built-in serial ports are pretty uncommon these days, so chances are your computer does not have one. Your computer may have a similar looking connector with three rows of pins with a total of 15 pins. That is actually a video port, not a serial port. You cannot use that type of a port to communicate with your timer. Here's a diagram of the 9-pin serial connector. Pins 2, 3, and 5 are the only ones actually used for serial communications. Any data that is sent from the computer to the timer goes out on pin 3, and any data received from the timer comes in on pin 2. Pin 5 is the ground connection between the computer and the timer. 
So now find pins 2 and 3 on the end of the USB to serial adapter or the built-in serial port if applicable. The pins are actually numbered inside the connector end, but the numbers are very, very small. If you look at this diagram with the row of 5 pins on top and 4 pins on the bottom, pin 1 is going to be the upper left pin and pin 2 will be the next one to the right of it. Now take the paper clip, screwdriver, or other piece of metal and short pins 2 and 3 together without touching any of the other pins or the outer rim of the connector. If you're using a loopback tester, then those pins will already be shorted together. Now let's go back to the hardware settings screen. With pins 2 and 3 shorted together, click on the send button. You may need to do this multiple times, making sure that you have good connection between pins 2 and 3. You may need someone to help you with this step, with one person shorting those two pins together and the other person clicking on the send button. If you see the complete text that you typed into the command box showing up in the timer data box, then the serial port is transmitting and receiving data. If nothing shows up in the timer data box, or only partially shows up, or it looks like total gobbledygook, then stop right here. If you're using a USB to serial adapter, that would mean that you have a problem with the drivers for the adapter or the adapter itself. We do offer USB to serial adapters on our website if you cannot find one locally. If you have a built-in serial port, then there is a problem with the port itself. For those of you that did see the full text showing up in the timer data box, you now have verified that your serial port is working properly. Our next test is a continuity test. Again, the purpose of this test is to identify if you have a bad serial cable or just a serial cable that is not the correct type of cable that is needed. This test will require the use of a continuity tester or a multimeter. You can buy an inexpensive continuity tester or multimeter at a local home improvement or auto parts store. If you get a continuity tester, make sure that it is really a continuity tester and not a voltage tester. When you touch the two ends of the continuity tester together, it should light up showing that there is a continuous circuit. If you're using a multimeter, go ahead and set it to the lowest resistance setting in ohms. Another helpful thing to have handy is a large paper clip. Let us look at the connectors on both ends of the serial cable. Usually one is a male connector and the other female. The pins are numbered, but the numbers are very, very small. On the male end of the cable with the row of five pins on top, pin one will be the upper left pin and pin two will be the next one to the right of it. On the female end of the cable, the numbering is the mirror image with pin one being the upper right pin. For serial timers, they only use pins 2, 3, and 5 to communicate with, so those are the only pins that you'll need to check. There is another type of serial cable called a direct connect cable. A direct connect cable has pin 2 on one end of the cable wired to pin 3 on the other end, and pin 3 is wired to pin 2 on the other end instead of being wired straight through. That type of cable will not work for communicating with your serial timer. Find pin 2 on each end of the cable. With the test probes, test from pin 2 on one end of the cable to pin 2 on the other end of the cable. To make this test easier, put the end of a large paper clip into the hole of the female end. You should get close to a 0 ohms reading if you're using a multimeter. If using a continuity tester, the light on the tester should light up. Repeat this test for pin 3 and then pin 5. If you have a good serial cable, then you should get continuity on each of those three pins, from one end of the cable to the other. If your cable is bad or the wrong type, we do offer serial cables on our website. Now if you made it this far, the paperclip test was successful, so you know that the serial port on your computer is working. The continuity test was successful, so you know that your serial cable is good and is the correct type of cable to be using. If that is the case, and if you're still having a problem with the timer communications, the problem lies with your timer. You would need to contact the timer manufacturer for support in that case. One final note, in the hardware settings screen, if you selected other serial timer, but are using one of the supported timers, make sure to change that setting back to the branded timer you have.